Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. So you started your new adventure with NLP at, uh, what, 20 years old? 19. You're working? 19, yeah, 19. So that was six years ago, 2018, yeah. Um, did any, has anything come up in those years then um, that might have trauma, to, where your traumas come out yeah. from those years, whether it's childhood, whether it's um, military, anything else? It did. Like, come up. It did. I, um, I was I found to in the first part of my journey with personal development I was using it as another coping mechanism rather than actually going deep and doing the work and being vulnerable and allowing people in um mm. so it was a coping mechanism and I just learned how to hide the shadows and hide what was really going on um mm. and when I when I was 21 I and like I just ended up like I met this guy on a cruise ship and um and then we ended up dating like for a while like for a couple of months afterwards and he was big on smoking weed and like I don't like that's not my thing I don't do that but one night I just decided to and um yeah and I ended up having a really bad case of psychosis um really really bad and it was laced it was laced with other stuff and that's why, like, I won't, I'd never touch it. I'd never touch it. And it was just a moment where I just wanted to detach. Um, Did he lace it? Don't think so. No. Like, I think, like. Because he was with you anyway, wasn't yeah, he? Was he? With there, me. he no... really, really looked after me um, hmm. during it. But it got so bad that, like, I did end up in, in hospital. Um, and I was, like, restrained because and I was completely blacked out like I don't really have any recollection of it but I just remember I just didn't feel the same and I finally came to consciousness I just didn't feel the same and then all of the stuff from my childhood the sexual abuse the military um sexuality confusion not knowing who I was like it was a time and it was right when COVID happened too so it was you said sexuality there sorry why why sexuality so when i was dating this guy he started questioning his sexuality and the next minute i started questioning mine as well because of all of the like um all of the pain i felt around the men i wasn't feeling successful in my relationships i couldn't trust i couldn't surrender i couldn't open my body and i'm like i think potentially that i'm not straight and i um ended up like having more of a sexual awakening and realizing that it could be really both for me and realizing that I was bisexual. And, um, and so I was navigating that as well. And even though like my brother is so happy, he's gay and my parents absolutely accept him. I still had that internalized homophobia from childhood where it didn't feel safe to be like that. And especially because I did seek like I was daddy's daddy's little girl and I was like the golden head child and I was like I felt like I wouldn't have his love and so when all of this stuff was happening I ended up speaking up you know and telling them all I'm feeling all of this like I'm feeling all of this stuff and from our childhood which you know they knew and so they're like oh wow like this is this is coming up and then then I then told them and I'm feeling like I'm not straight and I yeah, and then I ended up not having a relation, like not speaking with my dad for three months because he just didn't know how to, he didn't know how to handle it, he didn't know how to handle all the stuff that was coming up. I felt completely, um, I stepped out of coaching for probably a bit. I just moved into sales. Like I wasn't actually doing the coaching. I was just doing the sales for another coach because I just was all over the place. I really was for that, for that period. And, um, yeah, and then I just kind of learnt to just suppress it again, and um, you're just used to suppressing everything, aren't you? 
and that's why it's probably built up and that's probably why you had those moments. You said you feel you didn't feel safe uh, telling your family. Um, where did that come from? Because you, your brother obviously is, you've said it a few times, he's, he's gay. Mm. Um, did he try to open up as well? Is that why you felt fear in that, going in that direction? And being open yeah well he did, he did open up and it was funny it was on a cruise ship as well like when I had my he my dad saw him kind of just eyeing off this guy a lot on a cruise ship and then so oh. he finally opened up and then I remember that when it all came out it was like the world was over again you know like it was like, oh. felt like the world was over and not because I thought it was wrong I knew he was like gay I didn't think there was anything wrong with it but then just on their observations of of um homosexuality it, it ingrained it within me that actually this is wrong this is bad and then seeing it out in the the world and stuff like i mean um gay marriage only came in in 2017 so yeah, no. you know so it was very much internalized and um you know he's happy now but i just felt like i was having like an identity crisis and i'm like you know what what does this mean for me and um i didn't know how mm. to navigate it and i felt so much shame like I just lived in shame around it and I felt wrong that I could feel a certain way if it's a man, but I wasn't allowed to feel a certain way if it was a woman. Um, and yeah. And so it was really, really, really tough to navigate and then navigating all the sexual abuse, like memories and visions popping up. Like I really got to a point where I was my, I was not in a good headspace. Like I really got to the depths of not wanting to be here because I couldn't, I just couldn't switch off my mind. I couldn't just stop it. I couldn't stop the feelings. And, um, yeah, and I ended up, like, got into the therapy and started speaking about it, and that actually helped. You know, a lot of people, and especially in, in my industry, they look down on talk therapy and normal psychologists, but I definitely think it does it does help too. Like the combination, like some people go so far on the holistic and they forget about the medical industry and the health and I think they go together they really like go together and so it helped a lot it helped me that therapy helped me understand certain patterns in my childhood and um why I do certain things and why I went into like the military like it, it just was like all of the puzzle pieces coming together and it gave me that um like reassurance that there's nothing wrong with me you know just certain things that happened in my childhood were not okay and I took it on um, and, but, you know, I wouldn't change anything. And that's something that I say, like, I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be the woman I am today. Like, and I think mm. the woman I am today is so magical and it took me so long to get to this point of like really loving who I am and believing in myself and my gifts and my power. And like, I've been through hell and back and, a lot of people yeah. don't know that um, and I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, this is my story and I can own it and I don't let my story define me and keep me down. I'll always rise. Um, and, yeah, and I, I'm so grateful for the support that came into my life, you know, when I really needed it. And then, you know, um, my parents, and you know, I can speak about it now like I'm – fine like they're totally fine they're like you know she's she, we've always known she's been different she's um eccentric and now it also makes sense now all the psychic ability stuff has like come in and it's like kind of all these puzzle pieces coming together and now I can just speak and I've done a lot of healing on speaking my truth and expressing myself and being who I am um mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect me like it it used to affect me and now you know I've got a great relationship with my family the more that I actually did the deep work instead of presenting like I did the work and actually did it and sat with it and went to those depths and those darkness like I went to the darkness when I was in the military but then phew, it was another journey actually then going and like, releasing those emotions and stuff from those times in my life and so I've been able to sit yeah. there and know I'm okay like I didn't die and that's why a lot of us don't want to feel our emotions and go to those dark like deep dark spots because we think the ego thinks we're going to die, but we're not, and we're going to be okay. That sometimes the aftermath is actually the harder part than the physical trauma. It, it yeah, you know, I um, 
I, I completely relate to, and I'm not going to go into depth because this is your journey, but with my workplace bullying, yes, it was fucking horrible. And yes, I was throwing up and I had those thoughts of not wanting to be here as well, um, which I've only opened up in the last two years about. I could never have done this podcast if I wasn't willing to do the journey that you went through in terms of, you know, uh, opening up and really doing the work, not just saying you're doing the work, but doing the work. But the, when when those people were released from the workplace and no longer there, I thought, brilliant, I'll be able to be free. But I wasn't free within myself. Yeah. And uh, I ex that's when I started to experience the anxiety, the paranoia, the... And I'd never, I used to look at anxiety as weakness in people mm. and all of a sudden it was all over me. And I was, you know, and I've always been very open. People say open up, but I was always open. And I think I got crushed for being open, uh, not necessarily with words, but just, you know, body language, the way, oh, here we go again. Or, um, you know, words like, do you just not think you just didn't get along with these people? No, I was 32 at the time. I'm okay with not getting along with people. <laughs> There's been plenty of people I've not got along with. I have a problem with uh, the depth that they went to, they destroy my soul. Mm -hmm. And if I was to share it and say the story in full, when I'm saying, I'm like, I feel crazy saying, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm thinking, other people are thinking, this doesn't happen, Andy. You are making this up. Oh, it's in your head. But this was real. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't be existing if it wasn't. Yeah. Right. And I suppose your business wouldn't be existing if you didn't go through what you went through to where you are now. Next question, though, where you said before where you found yourself, you've been, where was that clicking moment of just being you and open and honest and living in it? Has it been the last year? Has it been the last two years? I definitely think it's been, it absolutely has been the last, like, year. Like, I took quite a sabbatical for, like, the last mm. year, not push, like not pushing in the business and actually really doing the inner work um, and finding myself and, becoming more authentic um and doing the healing and I got in like did the breath work um yeah. and just really super important yeah and like and bring the stuff up and um and then also like started started a um a journey like a in this last year a journey to get further justice for my time in the military which has been very healing and that's why this like oh good um yeah and then and moving more into the energetics and listening and and the migraines were so bad this year um like in this last year because it was trying to get me to to listen in and so have they disappeared now yeah i had the one that stress isn't I it i know i had that one i had the one come in and i did the light language on it and i healed it immediately like you can just heal like the ailments that come up wow. and disease that comes up in your body um yeah so it's been in like i'd say the last like i would honestly say it's been in the last few months where I've really like I've been on the journey of being like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But in the last few months, it's like I've been able to arrive and rest in it and sit in it and come from this place. And that's why things are popping off again for me and my business because I'm in such an authentic place and I feel more confident and I feel like I can hold that space again. Um and true and truly, you know, like hold that space truly for my my clients and that's something i really pride myself on is i don't want to lead someone or say i can lead someone somewhere if i haven't done it myself like i want to be able to create that sacred space and that's why i've always mm. really invested into my skills and all of the different trainings and immersed myself in it and worked with the companies to really get the concepts and even though I would get them knowingly, that next piece for me was the embodiment where it's like, okay, Renee, you've also got to confront some of these real dark things. And it's like, oh, I can confront this, I can confront that. But it's just like, but not that. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. like it's time. You'll be okay. It's safe. Uh, and just, yeah, just knowing that I can bring these stuff up and I've got all the tools to do it and knowing that I'm going to be okay and just connecting in with the divine connecting in with my spirit team i did connect with my spirit team and it was once everything came out in 2020 um the way that i healed like went to heal myself and to get myself back on track was through network marketing like i joined another network marketing company and 
the support of everyone and having that purpose again. And, and I was showing up like such a bright light during COVID, like building my network marketing company. Um, and, um, yeah. And then, and that was when I was every day, I was calling on spirit. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just calling on spirit and I felt so guided. And then when I stopped, um, I got into a relationship with a, a much older man and I, I swayed like kind of swayed off path from my spirit team and that was that was actually the catalyst after that relation during that relationship was when I got into therapy like it was it was a big mirror for everything it was like all right like you got to stop sweeping this under the carpet like I'd have a Mm -hmm. full breakdown and then the next day I'd be like I'm fine like let's just forget about it please no yeah on that note then your clients, your potential clients, your followers, after seeing this interview, will see a completely different side to what they do see. I, 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 that's what I'm getting from uh, what I do see. I could be completely wrong. So my uh, part of my apologies if, if I'm my ignorance, if I am, but if there's something to share now, this is the time. If somebody doesn't know anything about you and, and, and you want to get it out there, but you're, you're on the edge and you go, I don't know. Is there anything that you still want some you, the people to know about you? I feel, um, you know, and I do I do have a, a group on Facebook called the Lux Enchantress Layer where it's more intimate. Like that's where I feel oh. more like where I have in the past felt more safe to speak up on certain things rather than having it there right in the front and center of social media. But that's something that's shifting. Yeah. But, um, you know, I did go deep here today in this yeah. talk um, with you and you've created that safe space for me to do that as well. And my, my belief in knowing that my story is powerful. Is, it definitely is, you know, and my purpose, you know, my purpose and my mission, that's why I'm showing up here today, sharing this and owning that and going forward. And yeah, I, um, I feel like I've left no stone unturned, um, oh, amazing. and shared it all and shared everything um on that um regarding my regarding my story well i'll put i'll put everything in the show notes any pages that you want me to put in there and you you feel safe for people to come and join hit you up whatever it is websites social media i'll put it all in there for you email address whatever send it to me and i'll put it in the show notes so everyone can contact you because i'm sure they will um if there is anything we've missed on this episode this journey because this is not the end of the journey we're going to go into a whole new journey we're going to we're going to be together for a few weeks um <laughs> and then when we when we air this we're going to have two solid weeks together you're going to get sick of me because uh, there'll be no doubt i'll be whatsapping you every day <laughs> reels left right and center <laughs> but if there's if there is anything that we've missed from your journey your story your recovery whatever it may be because I do have two final questions before the, the, after this one, uh, before we end the show. But if there is anything that we've missed um, that you want to share and you think it's important, what would that be, if anything at all? It would be when the project work that I did in Vietnam, um, honestly, like I went over to Vietnam with my school and we did project work for a village um, and – that was one of probably the most profound spiritual experiences of my life. And I would say to anyone, like, if you're feeling like lost, go and do project work. The personal development, yes, can absolutely help, but the ability to go to another country and to look at how happy um, they are when they don't have, I guess, what we have, like the basics, the basics and stuff. Like mm. it was mm. just so profound um and i'm big big humanitarian and that's something that um i mean it's the aquarius in me but that's <laughs> something that i absolutely want to get back into and, and be doing more of um you know and it, that's contribution, contribution isn't it yeah contributing to something big yeah it really is i think that really is part of c- uh, completing the soul in a way is um uh, I live my life through four C's of contentment. I might have shared that with you in the pre-chat. Mm-hmm. But the first one is connection and the second one is contribution. Mm-hmm. And the other one is cope, you know, and part of cope would be sleep, mindfulness and exercise. And the fourth C, which we've, we have spoken about, not so much today, but we have spoken about uh, just eating well. 
uh, putting the, the the food in our body that we've always been putting in our body for millions of years and not putting the, the, the stuff that we see in packets. And don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I, I still dabble here and there, but I'm just mindful now of living that 80-20 rule, you know, yeah. put, really spending 80% of my time really putting the good foods into my system, um, you know, dark skin food, yeah. different coloured vegetables 30 of them per week i try anyway and i'm not i'm not perfect at it like uh, you know i'm I'm not perfect like i say i'm not perfect at that but eating fruit but understanding even fruit of what it's been genetically made into now and um just eating a good i do eat meat i know some people don't but i do eat meat and i'm um, understanding my cells at a cellular level of uh, what vitamins as you would say vitamins i would say vitamins into my body and understanding my cells of where even my genes and any mutations that i might have within my system getting those tests to see if i've got any expressions of predispositions if i'm going to go down anxiety or depression and you know i think i think we should be doing that as a whole now and you know i just think we're we're i'm really worried i'm slightly worried for the children that i see at schools and and, in terms of focus and attention and oh definitely all those basics are so important and that's another thing that actually some people don't know about me is i've been vegan for five years yeah so i i love it it was very much a conscious shift i got all my wisdom teeth out it was oh that was a pain and I couldn't eat solid foods for three weeks. And then in that time, I was very much like learning about consciousness too. Like it was five years ago, which is when I like was getting into NLP. And then I just started watching mm. all the documentaries and oof. that changed. Yeah, yeah, it changed. And so now I've been vegan five years and I love it. Yeah, good. And, and, and if it works for you, absolutely fantastic. And that's exactly the, the journey you should, should be on. Um, before we do go and ask those two final questions, I did want to show this picture, the one that you sent me of you winning. Yeah, the pageant. So you actually won the pageant? I won the pageant, then. yep. So it was, I like, right, I went to a, a, I thought it was like a catwalk thing last year and it was actually for a pageant. And I was like, oh, I, like, I used to always watch the pageant shows when I was a little girl, loved watching all those things, dance moms and everything. Um, and... I was like, I've always wanted to do a pageant. And I just thought that was more of an American thing. And then so the pageant came up and uh, I went in it, prepared for months. And I, yeah, I won, won my first ever pageant. Um, and one of the girls on it I made good friends with and she's got an amazing singing voice. And she's just mm -hmm. tried out for Australian Idol. So she's just asked me to be one of her supporters um, at Australian Idol. So that was so you're going to go there with her? Just If she got on, then you're going to yeah. go? <laughs> amazing oh we'll see you we'll, we'll see you brilliant <laughs> you'll see me on another show as well but i can't reveal too much about that <laughs> oh all right reveal after uh, off air then yeah <laughs> but by the time this is aired won't it, that you'll be doing well, that or? yeah by the time it it this is aired hopefully it's aired but i'm thinking it's going to come out march april next year maybe. yeah okay well we'll just get another show episode three exactly <laughs> <Renee Fischer>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay so future plan future plans then sum up your future plans for us okay so future plans i am um, really focused on building such an amazing safe inclusive community for my spiritual babes like my people that have gone through spirituality i find a lot of people that come to spirituality they've either gone through some real traumatic stuff and being able for them to own their power reclaim that um through my business so i'll um I'll be doing that in the form of programs, courses, memberships, and also really taking on the acting. So I'll be stepping into yeah. the next steps for that because I feel, you know, when I watch some movies, I feel such visceral feelings. I feel so connected to some characters, the deeper meanings behind movies and, and shows. Um, and I know, like, I've had moments watching TV shows or movies where I'm like, oh, I feel changed and I feel motivated and stuff. And so, you know, my mission is to, cultivate a new world of magic and empowerment um and to be able to really help people transform their lives and come home to themselves and i know i can do that through my business but i feel like i can also do that through expressing myself in the arts um so that's what i've learned from this episode and you um i just think um 
if anyone's going to do it, you're going to do it. <laughs> so when you're on the big screen or you're doing whatever you do, you don't remember, you don't ever forget leading our own yeah. way and you rem- always mention you shared your story first here. Yeah, okay. I know I do. <laughs> this is the first place I've really, truly shared my story. And I'm honored. I'm, I'm so honored that you did. And thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. It's uh, not easy. I know that, but I, I hope you did feel safe and uh, I'm so very, very grateful. Um, Absolutely. I asked the I ask a final question about purpose and and it's becoming a bit of a cliche and I, I kind of like that um and it's it's pretty summed up it's always pretty clear usually and it's it's very clear for you now but I always ask the guest to put it into a one liner what would your purpose be in a in a one liner cultivate a new world of magic are oh, you 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 screwed you planned that didn't you you said that so well it's just yeah <laughs> cultivate a new world of magic like there's magic miracles around us all the time and so let's exercise that let's put more focus from children in in their gifts and their consciousness and expanding their true desires and their passions and weave a world of magic so eventually we'll look like harry potter (laughs) (laughs) oh that's funny i get called harry potter all the time because of my accent Uh but anyway (laughs) I don't even have an accent like Harry Potter, but there we go. Um, Lightning bolt on your forehead. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much. Um, we, the journey's not ending. We've got another episode next uh, next week together where, uh-oh, uh, I'm under the spotlight a little bit more maybe, but you are because, um, you know, you are being vulnerable because you've, you've doubted yourself in, in this scene, and um, but you're, you're also opening up and putting yourself out there in doing this. I think it'll be exciting to see and watch, and, um, and- I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have asked you to do it if you hadn't have got those names. Like Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so- it was pretty, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> So you definitely, my my advice to you is definitely trust it. Mm-hmm. Um, just please trust it because you na- absolutely nailed it. And I, I just don't know how you could have done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you did, you should be entering the lot. If it's not real, you should just enter the lottery, you know. I, yeah, pick the numbers and stuff. Like that will probably, that's going to be a big next step for me too is is developing. Like I'm going to be putting a lot of focus in developing these gifts and, and in mediumship and stuff. So I'm looking for, yeah. I guess, my next mentor um, that is, psychic and does mediumship um my mom actually um her friend um who was her work colleague is like a white witch like sight like has the psychic gifts and she used to always say to my mom renee's gifted she has the gift like um you know connect her with me and i can help her awaken it and just never happened and then so it happened in the way that it did and it's all all perfect and then now her mom's friend is like let me meet renee i want to train her so i'm like i feel like she could be the next mentor oh do it let's get her on we'll do yeah. a three three uh three-way podcast that would be amazing <laughs> <laughs> Well, the journey's not going to end here. We, I'm going to see you on the 16th of October, but for everybody who is watching, we'll see us right next week. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get nervous, and uh, I'm ex- super excited, though. And uh, thank you for coming on Leading Our Own Way. It's been such an honor, and thank you for joining me on my journey. Thank you for inviting me. It's such a pleasure. It was really great to get your message, and straight away you were like, what's your story? And um, and then inviting me here, I'm really grateful. And, and I think it's amazing what you're doing, bringing people together to share their story because like just in the power of sharing the story, like so many people can have transformations from that and resonate with the different guests that you bring on. Um, so I'm very yeah. grateful for this opportunity as well. Thank you for your kind words. It really, 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 really means a lot. So thank you All right. to everybody else. Come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm with, oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Anyway. The psychic show. <laughs> yeah, the psychic. Come back with Renee and myself, and uh, we'll see you next <laughs> week. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way, and we'll get you on next week's episode.